Hello, I'm Cheryl McCarthy of the City University of New York. Welcome to One to One. Each week, we address issues of timely and timeless concern with newsmakers and the journalists who report on them, with artists, writers, scientists, educators, social scientists, activists, government leaders. We speak with each one to one. I'm delighted to welcome Dr. Danielle Moss Lee to the program. She's the new CEO of the YWCA of New York, or we might also say of the new YWCA, as it responds to the changing needs of the population. She comes to the 154-year-old organization with a resume designed for this job. So what has this organization that we've all heard of, but haven't heard a lot about in recent years, been up to lately? And how is it different from the YWCA that existed when we were growing up? Welcome. Thank you. You know, I probably every woman my age knows about the YWCA. You know, it was a place where when, you know, I was a teenager, it's where you went to take typing, typing lessons or learn how to sew and learn other skills that were deemed um, gender appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, I haven't been keeping up much with what the, the YWCA has been doing uh, in recent years. So um, what's going on with you all these days? What's, what's your, what are you doing? These, does, does one still go there to learn? Do you still teach, offer sewing lessons and, and typing lessons? Or is the focus different these days? Well, the focus is different. Um, actually, we sold our uh, facility on uh, Lexington Avenue about seven years ago. And so uh, they decided to kind of take the programming models out into the communities of New York City. Um, and so we're doing early childhood education, after school programs for students from K through 12, and workforce development programs for women. Okay. Now, New York actually had the first YWCA in the United States. Absolutely. Opened back in 1858. Do you know who started it and, and why? What the... um, I don't know who started it exactly, but I know it was a group of women from uh, the UK uh, who okay. came here and okay. saw a need to help women who were immigrating to New York in those early days get adjusted, get access to housing, uh, domestic support, uh, education, um, and, and workforce development. Now, I assume because it, it was, it's a Young Women's Christian Association that there was some kind of religious support for the organization. Right. I don't know if there was a formal religious affiliation, but definitely um, the organization was founded on Christian principles mm -hmm. of, you know, helping those who were not in a position always to help themselves. Okay, okay. And I assume it still believes in those principles, but there's no formal tie to any kind of church or religious no, organization? No, no. How, do you know how many Ys there are in the United States? There are roughly 230 YWCAs mm -hmm. across the country, um, and we are in 92 countries around the world. Is it a membership organization or? It is a membership organization. Um, and, you know, just has such an incredibly rich history, not only in terms of the typical things that you think about when you think of a Y, like the sewing, cooking, um, and typing classes that you mentioned, but also this really rich history of women's advocacy, so they were at the forefront of the women's suffrage move movement here in the United States, um, very involved in civil rights uh, in the 50s and 60s, um, and right now we're, you know, trying to put ourselves at the forefront of issues around equal pay for equal work, um, workplace flexibility, domestic violence, um, to really be a voice for women uh, in this country. And I think th the thing that makes this organization unique also is that it is women-led. Uh, so mm -hmm. all of our boards of directors um, are comprised primarily of women. So how many girls in New York City, how many would you serve in the course of, a, say, a year? So our, our branch of the Y helps about 2,000 women and children in New York City annually. Mm -hmm. And so, and how many locations do you have? Uh, we're in, prob I want to say maybe 10 different locations. We run a lot of our programs in public schools, Okay. Um, but we also have separate facilities for our, our uh, early learning centers. Okay. Now, to take advantage of your programs, does one, one, one have to be a member of the Y or not? Um, not necessarily. Okay. No. Okay. Okay. It's also the, in addition to being the Young Women's Christian Association, it's also the Young Women's Christian Association. And when I was growing up, it seemed to 
cater primarily to girls up to through, through their teenage years. But I have a sense now that you also serve more older women as well. I think we do, um, and I think that focus on young women is something that I'm looking forward to re-energizing um, through the the implementation of girls leadership development you programs. Mean more, more on the girls, right? Also, okay, right. So we want to just create some additional balance. Um, I think also that there is a lot of untapped uh, possibility with the women who volunteer through our programs and are engaged in our board of directors and other things that we're involved in, and we're not connecting them to the next generation of women. So that's something that I'm also looking forward to focusing mm -hmm. on. But basically, you serve females of all ages, from the youngest up and right. So up I would say, you know, um, aside from the work with the workforce development with the after-school programs where we engage women who are parenting kids in the city, um, and with what we hope to do in terms of girls' development, we'll be serving a much broader um, population of, of girls and women in New York City. Do the women you are serving tend to be, I was looking at some of the programs on your, your, your website, mm -hmm. do the women that you are serving in New York City, do they tend to be working class women who are sort of trying to struggle to get it together to get an education, to get a jump start on a career, or to get a jump start after a failed marriage, or not? Or right, so I would say the women who benefit from our direct <coughs> service programs, um, particularly our, our WEN program, which is the Women's Empowerment Network, mm -hmm. um, are women who have been out of the workforce for a long time. Some of them have been uh, homemakers. Um, others, for a variety of different reasons, have not been the primary breadwinners in their families, and uh, they find themselves having to, you know, get back on the proverbial horse and, mm -hmm. and go back out into the workplace. Um, and that program has really provided a unique opportunity for women who are civically minded in New York City, particularly um, some of our corporate partners, to provide mentoring, uh, training, development support to those women um, through some of the activities that we're offering. You talk about some of your sponsors. Is it completely privately funded? No, no. Actually, I would say probably 85% of the budget comes from government contracts. Really? Okay, to run spe something that specific... Can, right. Uh, something that obviously we'd like to um, balance out a little bit more. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I remember, you know, when I came to the city in, I guess, in, in the 70s, uh, it seemed to be that... Um, the Y was a place where, where young women coming to the city, or older women coming mm -hmm. to the city, could find inexpensive, safe lodgings. Was that, right. was, that was part of your... Right, um, that, was, that was a big part of the portfolio at that time. And I definitely think that we've had to rethink what it means to be an organization um, without being able to provide that kind of housing support. Um, but I would say nationally, there are a number of YWCA organizations that are still providing that kind of intensive housing support. And um, the one, the Y in Brooklyn and still does that. And the Y in Brooklyn that. is definitely one of those. Okay. So let's talk about some of your programs. Now, first of all, uh, are the typing and sewing classes, are they gone? Well, actually, <laughs> I want to say that I visited one of our day camps this summer, <clears throat> and I was very excited to see a group of young women in East New York, Brownsville, sewing. Okay. Um, so people are still sewing. People are still. <laughs> That's where sewing. I learned to sew at the Y. And so <laughs> the, the enthusiasm that the girls had for dressmaking was just unbelievable. Uh huh. Um, you know they're inundated with all of these messages about fashion. So it's Project this, Runway. Right. Effect. This is Project Runway. Uh, you know YW style. Definitely. Right. 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 Wild. Um, tell your programs for adolescent and teenage girls. These tend to be our after school programs? Definitely after school extended day programs. Um, <clears throat> we're working with kids who are below grade level, on grade level, above grade level, um, but who need additional emotional, social, and academic support to kind of get to where they'd like to go in life. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just um, amazing to see what can happen when we invest in young people above and beyond um, the minimum that schools are required to provide. So is this primarily tutoring or is this like support group and it's counsel? What is it? It's all of the above. <clears throat> it's uh, counseling when it's needed, home visits when it's needed. Um, we're launching a girls STEM program uh, at one of the high schools that we're working with. STEM? Uh, science, technology, uh, 
engineering and math okay. education okay. Um, to kind of get girls thinking more globally in terms of their career options. Um, I think traditionally a lot of workforce development programs that focus on women have looked at administrative um, positions that just don't seem to close the pay gap right. um, for women. And so um, we want this next generation of girls to feel like whatever it is that they want to pursue, um, they'll have the skills and the preparation to be able to do that effectively. Mm -hmm. Tell me about the, the Women's Empowerment Network. So I, <laughs> I actually just went to one of their uh, graduation ceremonies this week at Barclays, um, which was uh, a sponsor for this particular class. And these are women, uh, mostly over 35, up to 50 years old, who've been out of the workforce for a long time, who've never um, really had to use a computer, who don't know what Outlook is, um, who've had to overcome some real challenges in life, um, but have made a decision to really um, begin to reposition their lives. Um, and the program doesn't just focus on um, the, the hard skills of what it means to be in the workplace with the resume writing and the computer skills and all those kinds of things. Um, there's a lot of emotional support and community building among the women um, and the mentors who come from the corporate sector to talk to them about the soft skills that they'll need in order to succeed in corporate America. Um, there has been an art therapy class um, that helps them to work through some of the challenges that they may have faced in their lives. Some of them have been the victims of domestic violence. Um, and so it's really um, not just building hard skills, but really helping people to build themselves back up emotionally mm -hmm. and spiritually as well. Okay. We're going to take a short break. Then we'll be back with more with Danielle Moss Lee, the Chief Executive Officer of the YWCA of New York, after this message. Hi, I'm Matthew Goldstein. November is CUNY month and a great time to visit CUNY campuses in all five boroughs. Learn why more CUNY students than ever are winning national awards and scholarships. Our colleges and professional schools are holding open houses for you. Meet world-class faculty, ask about financial aid. The time to start working on your future is now. Visit cuny.edu slash CUNY month. Welcome back to One to One. I'm Cheryl McCarthy of the City University of New York, and I'm talking with Danielle Moss Lee, Chief Executive Officer of the YWCA of New York. Tell me about your early learning centers. So um, the goal of the early learning centers is to provide high quality, um, structured uh, daycare to, to working families um, who are not quite making enough to make ends meet. Um, and the idea is that those children have just as, mu as much of a right to a quality childcare experience that adequately prepares them for elementary school as any other child in the city. Um, and, and I also think that the childcare programs are kind of go hand in hand with the work that we're doing to help women get back in the right, workforce. Right, right. Um, you know, I have to say, having been a working mother and still <laughs> am a working mother myself, um, you know, your mind isn't right if you don't know that your kids are safe um, and in a caring, nurturing environment while you're now, at work. Now, is the, is, is the child care provided free or is it on a sliding scale or how does that work? There is a bit of a sliding <coughs> scale. Um, it's a program that's managed by uh, ACS um, here in the city. And um, I think it's done, you know, tremendous wonders in the, for, the, for the women um, and, and children that it serves. We offer parenting workshops, um, we talk about nutrition in the home, um, we, you know, really build those early literacy skills for the kids. Um, it, I think it's just an amazing and important thing to do if you're really trying to improve the condition of women in the city. Now, we've talked about a lot of different programs that you offer. I mean, do, is there a fee for any of the, I mean, aside from the child care, is there a fee for any of them? Are they free? Are there scholarships? How does that work? So, um, the programs, for the most part, are, uh, are free. Um, to in, in the communities that we're working in. Mm -hmm. um, we think that's important. We want to make sure that, um, you know, we are adequately addressing kind of the income disparities um, that our families are facing in New York City and making sure that everyone has an equal shot um, to, to kind of living the American dream. Now, did you go to the Y? WCA when you were a girl? I did not go to the YWCA, but I do have a long history with the Y uh, 
as a concept. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it certainly opened a great deal of doors for me as a young person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now your background is in education. You were a co-founder of the Susulu Walker Children's Academy, a charter school in Harlem. Is that still in existence? It is still in existence. How is that doing? I think that they um, have had some, you know, challenges in terms of leadership consistency, but they have a wonderful board of directors and the kids seem to be absolutely thriving. Where is it located? It's on West 115th Street. That's, a, that's an elementary school, right? An elementary school. Okay. And you were president and CEO of the Harlem Educational Activities Fund for 10 years. Tell us about what that organization does. So uh, that organization is a college access organization that identified uh, kids from Harlem, the Bronx, uh, and other surrounding communities in middle school to prepare them for more competitive high schools in New York City and then to support them into and through college. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, I mean we all know about um, the Harlem Children's Zone. Uh, did, did you ever work in hand in hand with we, that organization? or When I was there I didn't have the opportunity to do that. Okay, okay, okay. Do you see sort of carryover between the kind of stuff that you were trying to do there and some of the programs that you're overseeing at the Y? Oh, absolutely. <clears throat> I mean, we are working with very similar populations in terms of, uh, particularly around the high school programming, in terms of the focus that we want to develop for girls in youth development. And um, I'm looking forward to kind of building on the best practices of uh, my earlier stage mm -hmm. career uh, and taking them forward with me in this new iteration of, of, of my life. Now you have a PhD, What's, what subject is that in? Organization and Leadership from Teachers College at Columbia University. Was it your uh, idea that you would be involved in education then? D absolutely, in fact, I think I always thought that I would end up as a school principal. Um, and uh, I just fell in love with the social sector and the nonprofit community. I felt that there were so many um, opportunities to be innovative and creative in a way that was not as constrained um, as, as I might have found working within the system. Right. Um, so I like to think that I've been a great advocate for public education and a supporter um, of public education here in New York City, but I've been able to go about it in a, in a very different way that right. I think reflects my values and the things that I'm, I'm good at. What drew you to the YWCA? I just thought that it was the next <coughs> logical step. Um, I think that, you know, the, the bulk of the programming that we offer obviously is in education, um, but this idea of really helping them to think about and reshape their outreach to girls and women was incredibly exciting to me, uh, particularly as the parent of a 16-year-old girl uh, who I'm raising with my husband here in New York City. Um, and just kind of seeing some of the social challenges that she was beginning to face, um, you know, trying to get the message across that, you know, you deserve not to be objectified by the men and, and boys in your life, um, that girls are just as smart in math and science as boys are. Um, and, and I really have found myself trying to combat a lot of social uh, society's messages around what girls are capable of. In terms of the ratio of girls to women who are being served by your programs, is it, would you say it's it's sort of 50-50, is it at this stage, is it more women than girls, is it more girls than women? It's well, definitely more girls than women. Really, okay. Um, but we're looking <clears throat> to expand um, in, in all of those areas because we see that there's tremendous need. Now you've only been there since July, right? Yes. But give me some idea of what your, what your job entails. Um, so, I mean, I think I've spent this uh, first almost 100, 100 days. days. <laughs> really kind of learning the organization, talking to constituents, um, talking to staff. We have people who've been with this organization for well over 20 years. We're deeply invested in the mission of the organization, um, a wonderful board of directors, um, just to kind of see what their ideas were in terms of how do you take an organization with such a rich um, history and really position it for an, a future um, with a new generation of, of girls and women. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I've spent the time really trying to learn, um, also kind of thinking about where I want to take us in terms of girls programming, in terms of women's advocacy, how we're going to get college age women involved in, in the Y movement here in the New York City. And um, it's just been an exciting time for me. 
Do you do a lot of fundraising? Is that, are you expected? That is, that there is a, obviously a high expectation that I will spend um, a great deal of time fundraising. Are there issues that you think the Y has not been tackling that you'd like to see them address? So, I mean, I think that they have um, developed a pretty broad portfolio, um, but there's a very interesting aspect of our mission. It's called, it, uh, it's on our website, it's on all of our materials around eliminating racism. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that we could definitely be the conduit to having some really important structured conversations about how race impacts the experience of women here in New York City and across this country. Um, but also, you know, what would we gain as a society if we could eliminate racism? I, n I noticed that um, legal counseling is part of your, one of the services that you offer. Tell me about that. Um, the legal, <coughs> legal counseling has touched everything from landlord issues to immigration issues um, that women have come to us in terms of challenges that they're facing. Um, and we just have done such a great job, I think, the organization has in terms of really finding the best of the best in the legal profession, in the corporate sector, um, in the social sector, in the health professions, and getting those women to come back and volunteer and offer pro bono support and services to other women um, who wouldn't likely have access to good advice without their involvement. Mm -hmm. Do you see a need to, you know, my, my image, I mean, what I remember the why is as I described it to you. Do you see a need to update the WISE image to sort of overcome the notion that it's an organization that belongs to sort of a previous century? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, you know, I think that all of the things that the WISE is concerned about and that the WISE is um, touching are absolutely relevant today. And I think that um, one of the goals that I have and that the board is really counting on me to deliver on is to make sure that younger women understand that um, just because you hear the name and you hear 154 years old, um, our ideas, our strategies are just as relevant today as they were 100 years ago. You mentioned that some of the, um, the part of the legal services part uh, often benefits, you know, immigrant women. Do you, do you see a lot of immigrant women and, and in particular immigrant girls I'm interested in to taking advantage of you your know, programs? I haven't, I haven't seen a great deal of that. Um, I don't know if there's a disconnect between um, people just kind of knowing how to access our um, support um, or if people just don't think of that when they think of us. Mm -hmm. I think traditionally people still think why I'm going to go swimming, I'm going to work out. Right. Um, you know, so it's kind of like a, a re reintroducing the brand in a very different way um, and, and so that people have a, a sense of what we're about. So far, I mean, I know you haven't been there very long, right. but so far, what's been the most rewarding part of your job? Um, I would say that um, just the <coughs> commitment of these incredible volunteers who just keep coming back um, who are invested in building capacity for the organization. Um, I saw mentors, like I said at the graduation earlier this week, who really just That's took the Women Empowerment, the women, Empowerment. women Empowerment uh, Network, just kind of taking time out of their day, um, not because their boss was kind of looking over their shoulder to do it, but really having an opportunity to give something back, but also recognizing that they also had something to learn from the struggles of others. Um, and I think it helped that some of the volunteers in their talks um, develop a deep appreciation for where they are in their lives um, and also to develop some courage around taking risks of their own in terms of going forward. Well, welcome to the new Y. I'm sure it's going to be you. a very uh, fruitful experience for you and the organization. Thank you so much. We're out of time. I want to thank Danielle Mosley for joining us today. If you'd like more information about the YWCA, please go to the organization's website at ywca.org. For the City University of New York and One to One, I'm Cheryl McCarthy. If there are any people you'd like to hear from or topics you'd like us to explore, please let us know. 
You can write to me at CUNY TV, 365 Fifth Avenue, New York, New York, 10016, or you can go to the website at cuny.tv and click on Contact Us. I look forward to hearing from you.